Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun, Hello. fantastic things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Old Man Vin here, switching the bits, doing the nightmare stuff, all under Linux, like my co-host Jill Bryant in <laughs> LA, where things yeah. are a little splody, but the man oh, yes. <laughs> who likes the man who stares at walls on Pedro Mateus from the Isles of Britannia. Oh. Look at him. That's, That's beautiful. A wall. <laughs> yes, you do, Pedro. Dude, okay, I, I can joke. <laughs> the reason I make that joke is I remember in university finding like a good acoustical tile to zone out on because guess what? We didn't have Wi Fi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had to do something listening to boring lectures to where they, you get class credit for being there. I was like, that's a cool one. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? We got another fun show for you this week. Um, everyone joining live. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, what's new with everyone? Pedro, you got new toys. I saw these you're posting oh, yeah. in our Discord. You're like, hey, look, I got a thing. <laughs> this is a very powerful toy, about 400 watts worth of power that it can handle anyway. It basically takes whatever you feed it up to 400 watts. It's an HD Plex 400W. It's, yeah, does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a DC to DC power supply converter stabilizer whatever you want to call it and this is what you put inside a computer with very limited space like a certain steam box that i may be working on and then you have a power brick like one of the big chunky dell laptop power bricks and yeah that that's what drives this and the one chunky um dell power brick that i had that could actually mm. power everything that's in the steam box right now the connector is a little bit too thick mm. with two C's. Uh, so, yeah, no, I'm going to have to find another uh, one. <laughs> Jill, anything exciting uh, happened to you lately <laughs> that you can think of? Oh, God. So last night I had a bit of, of a house plumbing emergency. Uh, we had a blockage, which, uh, and we have three bathrooms, and two of the toilets literally had water leaking from out from under them. So it was so powerful that <laughs> it made two toilets uh, literally kind of explode, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but emergency's over for now. We've got a, a temporary fix right now until we get, uh, uh, our last, uh, galvanized pipe from under the house. <laughs> so that was a thing. <laughs> uh, sad that you're going to have to let go of those vintage pipes. I, I know you yes. like collecting <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. retro Turn them into pillars for the living room. <laughs> Yeah. Good. So, man, <laughs> I'm glad you got that fixed. Speaking of vintage gear, yeah. man, I've been on the hunt for a Mackie Control Universal, which is like a 20 year old uh, piece of equipment. It's an interface with a jog dial on it and a couple of extra buttons. If anyone sees one laying around with somebody looking to get rid of that, because I'm going to have to recap the thing. I already know this. Call me. And because uh, <laughs> everyone on eBay is like, I want $400. And I've been watching for it for two weeks, and those same six have been reposted twice because no yep. one's paying 400 bucks <laughs> for a first gen mm. a 2001 mac control universal yeah <laughs> so i will be perpetually patient waiting on that so i can do some more fancy editing with audio and stuff but let's get right into it this week uh because we talked about the pine phone i think uh, everyone's like yo man that thing is cheap enough i'm gonna pick one up it looks like a fun little tiger toy but yeah. then again the internet had to say something. Yes, yeah. this is the internet, so not everyone was on board with that, and there were a lot of misconceptions floating around, and uh, Lucas Erisinski was uh, very keen to address those, and he put out a post that's like, okay, I take no pleasure in this blog post, even as I'm writing these words, I am intentionally torn on whether this is the right approach to addressing the problem on hand. And basically, uh, people, or some people, were starting the rumors that oh, uh, it's using a lot of um, blobs and a lot of closed source, so it's not actually an open phone. And he took issue with that, obviously. I mean, it's the Pine phone. If, if you have a look at what Pine does, it's like, really? Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. they break it down. It's like, okay, let's start with the all-winner A64 SoC. Which is the the brains, the uh, the big CPU, GPU, everything that's uh, that drives the phone. That is compatible. It's all open. That's all there. Linux 5.6, the upcoming kernel release, will contain um, drivers for just about everything that's in the SoC. So that's not even an issue. So the blobs, 
most of them obviously are where uh, exactly where you expect them to be. They're in the Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. and the camera. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and of course, the LTE modem. Mm-hmm. That goes without saying. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, those four places, which is exactly where the bobs are everywhere else as well. So, it, yeah. It, it's a lot to do about nothing. I understand. Yeah. I mean, because it's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, that firmware, it's got to be loaded into that real tech um, during initial, initialization of the system. This has got to happen. But, but. There is no RAM or flash storage shared between those systems. So I mean, that's the yes. cleanest way you're going to be able to pull it off. Yeah. Is this a, outside of just being the internet, to put a finer tip on it, is this the uh, the attack of the privacy hobbyist that I love ever much? I mean, yeah. he does, like, that's where he ends the blog post. It's like, I don't want to start a conspiracy theory, but he's very clearly into Too it late. something. So Man. there's like, is this Librem <laughs> or the people who funded yeah. the Librem who now don't feel terribly <laughs> secure in their decision and are trying to uh, make the competition look worse. Well, you know you know what they could do with the Pine Phone that'd make everyone happy? What if they put hardware dip switches on the back to disable they these components? Did. Oh, wait, yeah. that's right. Yes, <laughs> for security. They, they yeah, and, yeah, this is so true. And I was so happy he wrote this article because I've actually been reading a lot of articles that, that state that the phone is closed source. And, and of course, knew better than that, just a few proprietary blobs where you have to have proprietary, but that's it. And, you know, like Pedro was saying, the LTE modem, which runs it, the LTE E modem it has to be closed, uh, but it runs its own black box Linux system, and um, that has proprietary blogs in it. But of course it does, because it's a cellular radio, and they need that for security. So, yeah. <laughs> Still going to get one. I mean, they're cheap. Yeah. It's something to play with. And <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> have fun with stuff like this. Just be glad it exists. Don't start picking yeah. it apart because you Nip- spent like a thousand dollars and something you might not have gotten yet um <laughs> yes very good man <laughs> linux kernel 5.5 is here with better Yay! hardware support so linux kernel 5.5 kleptomaniac uh, <laughs> excuse me kleptomaniac. you butchered that hard <laughs> <did>. man <laughs> kleptomaniac <laughs> octopus um, and as ben has said has has been released with better hardware support, including um, the ext4 file system now supports encryption on file systems where the block size is less than the page size and gains direct input output via IO map. And for hardware, AMD overdrive overclocking support via command line is also added for Linux gamers using Navi GPUs. Yay! I'm gonna be getting one of those soon. <laughs> and I was really happy about this for those of us who have older Logitech hardware. Um, your Logitech G15 gaming keyboard with the built in LCD screen will work on Linux. Oh, I remember being oh, so jelly. I wanted the Windows one of those. Users... <laughs> yeah, yeah the I wanted users... one of those back in the day because it had the LCDs. <laughs> what type of nerd device be that? <laughs> Yeah. Imagine well, like a, a little control station <laughs> style keyboard right, with yeah. all of the macro keys, all of the media keys, and an LCD display that shows like CPU load and RAM. Yeah, all the and, temps and yeah, yeah. your hardware. And oh, I, used to I be wanted jelly. one of those so bad. Yeah, so I used to be so jealous Mine of looks all like the something Windows out of Battlestar Galactica, so whatevs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually do have to look on eBay for one of those, see if I can get one on the cheap, because... Yeah. Apparently you can no, address you those with the one. now. <laughs> no, both of you like obnoxiously clicky keyboards. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, I like That's the linear actuation keyboard. of the Cherry MX Reds. Mm. It's a membrane, but it's one of the best membrane. It was before the <laughs> mechanical keyboards. Oh, came I back love into, I, it's it's clearly you know. not a mechanical keyboard, but I can excuse that. Squish, yeah. squish, 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 squish. I mean, it's I one of the, it's... the membrane keyboard I had before this one, but this one yeah. is, feels so much better for that typing. That is absolutely pretty cool. A couple of new things that we got <laughs> rolling awesome. in with 5.5 is Raspberry Pi 4 support. And, and I don't know if this is something, information that I personally want to know, but an NVMe <laughs> temperature driver, which 
I just assume my NV because I have two NVMe drives <laughs> in yeah. this Threadripper, and I'm getting ready to put another one in there. I so where does it read from the controller or the flash? It, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe it uses laser. <laughs> Because you kind of want the controller to be nice and chill, but the flesh to be nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> you do. It's got to be in its optimal state. But as long as yeah. it runs, I don't ever want to be like, oh, right, I want to get you at just the perfect temperature. I, I was happy when we were finally able to retrieve smart data from them without having to <laughs> compile a custom stuff. Because that, that was a thing back in the day. Good on them, Lon. Uh, Pedro, your favorite distribution has got an update. Sold us 4.1. Yay! Fortitude. It's out. You know it. You love it. We've talked about it several times on this show. The one I took away from this was like, wait a minute. Look at that. It's got eSync support, Pedro. What's eSync support? Mm -hmm. This sounds like moon technology. So, eSync, uh, you may be well aware of it without even knowing it, which is the thing that Proton uses mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. create a different job on a different thread whenever a program asks for a new job. So basically it allows for multi-threading where multi-threading wasn't possible before. And it runs into a bit of a snag on Linux by default because most distros have a very low no-op uh, hardware limit set, like in the case of Solus. While I was using it, the default uh, hardware limit was 4096. That's not mm. enough. That's not enough for an indie game. Once you get to the AAA games, yeah, you got hundreds of thousands of the things. But they actually took a tip from uh, Strider, from Lutris. Yeah. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. uh, Lutris is setting this to uh, 655,000. So we're going to set it to 655,000 as well. So very good job. A <laughs> couple of things in this. Mm -hmm. um, Cloudflare DNS is now used as fallback secondary to Google. Nice. And that's pretty good. I use Cloudflare for everything simply because it's 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. That's... Easy to read. <laughs> and FFmpeg 422. So it's got all the latest bits and bobs in that, which I am very pleased. Very pleased with. Uh, what does this thing use to boot, Pedro? You were talking about this in the Yeah, because yeah. uh, it's one of the bits that uh, Jill had in the show notes. It's like, uh -huh. Solus doesn't use Grub. It uses the uh, CLR boot manager, which is the Clear Linux boot manager. Yay. And what it does, it's just a very teeny tiny shim that handles the transition between the UEFI shell and systemd boot. That's it. Hmm. That's all it uses to boot. That's it. <laughs> Wizardry. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, there's also, um, you know, um, in improvements to systemd, speaking of booting, which include future improvements to Solus around EFI support. So, yeah, like Pedro was saying, there were issues with dual booting. Uh, Solus with other operating systems such as Ubuntu, be because Grub didn't e exist and those those flags weren't set. So, but it's easy to fix. And uh, Solus also ships with Linux kernel 5.4.12, which includes hardware support for newer AMD RX GPUs such as the 5700 and the 5700 XT. And there's also support for AMD Ryzen third gen processors. New Intel Comet Lake and Ice Lake CPUs, as well as newer NVIDIA GPUs, such as the RTX 2080 Ti. And it definitely has much faster much faster installation. I installed it yesterday, and it, it I mean, it always was pretty fast installer, but it's even faster now. No, that's fantastic and... for distro hoppers. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> For, or, or us, us testers and reviewers, yes. So, and this is due to the new Z standard compression for the Squash FS images, which is really cool. So it's the first distro it to use that. It makes the image itself a bit, bit, just a little bit bigger, mm. but yeah. it's much faster to uh, decompress. Yeah. And Less compression. Solus, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Solus, again, is a rolling release. So if you're already yes. running Solus, chances are you're already <laughs> using the latest version and you already have everything that we just talked about. So, yeah. The updates <laughs> are already inside the house. Canonical's been up to yep. something, though, man. I'm like, what, what's mm -hmm. going on here? Yes. Yeah, so this is this is actually really cool. This is exciting. Um, Canonical has announced the first commercially available mobile cloud computing platform. It is called Anbox Cloud and is an Android-based scalable operating system. 
It allows apps to be streamed to any operating system or form factor and can be used for enterprise workspace applications, cloud gaming, software testing, and mobile device virtualization. And this is really, really cool. You know, this is what Canonical has been working on all this time. I've been hearing about the secret project. So the Anbox Cloud is the next step into a software as a service cloud computing model. And we become closer to just needing a web browser to access our apps. In fact, in the article, Jack M. Germain states, graphical output is streamed back to the client via WebRTC. Direct access through a web browser makes it possible to deliver Android applications to any device that can run a browser. Oh, so, yeah, we're living that's in that how world. they're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yes. okay, that's fair. <laughs> and yeah, you know, pretty soon all our devices will just be thin clients, even our mobile phones. So, yeah. <laughs> Didn't Android have, um, what, what version did web app? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, where it only downloads like effectively the front end of the app. Yeah, it's literally the shortcut that launches a Chrome window. Yeah, yes. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was version? one of the earlier ones, but yeah. Android WebView has been around for a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's kind of a thing. That's kind of neat, but that's going to also be heavy, heavily reliant on the deployment of 5G. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other nice thing I mean, about this is security, because a lot of people are, you know, so they don't have to use do it through Google. They can do it with through Canonical and feel more comfortable with it for more security reasons. I so mean, there's that's it's it's still an Android <laughs> app that you're streaming to your device, but yes, yeah. it's going to be an Android <laughs> app hosted on Amazon and somewhere. I mean, right? It, it, yeah, it's whoever's nameplates on the front of it. But hey, the technology is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yeah. we're seeing everything getting pushed down. You know, to the much loved, the universally praised uh, Google Stadia. Yes. Everyone's mm -hmm. joyous about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, joy. Joy. That's a word you can use. It's lovely. <laughs> it's cute, man. It's the only gaming service that you bought a pat on the head. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're redeemed Epic Game Store. No, you're not. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, speaking of good news, or, you know, sarcastically good news, uh, QT is offering changes for 2020. Yeah, yeah so yes. uh, Arthurin brought this up uh, <laughs> earlier in the week, and they're at it again, because this is not the first time that Drave tried to do this, and if you remember last time, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. The installation of QT binaries will require a QT account. Long-term support releases and the offline installer will become available to commercial licensees only. New QT offering uh, <laughs> for startups for small businesses will cost 500 bucks a year. And then they go on to say that we are making this change to encourage open source users to quickly adopt new versions. If you run that to DBSO Tron, uh, you get, we want the open source community to literally become our unpaid beta testers again. And we will hold the stable releases behind the paywall hostage because we can. So, yeah, no, something told me that when this story first came up, this wasn't going to end terribly well. And if you go look on Twitter about this issue, it didn't. And uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 went, it got to the point that they even went back and the post uh, that they released as an apology last time that they tried this, they deleted it. At one point, <laughs> it was deleted long enough that the Google cache managed to grab it and the Internet Archive managed to grab it. So it was gone, and then it was reinstated when people realized, wait a second, why did you delete the last time apology post? And then they reinstated it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and so for 499 499 uh, US dollars a year, you can get the startup small business edition of QT, which has all the benefits of a commercial license. Well, if the cost of QT and loss of features is too great for an open source project, they can switch to the open source framework of GTK, which is a bit problematic for, of course, KDE projects. 
No. But the option is there. T TK. Well, let's go back to WX yeah. widgets. Um, <laughs> yes, let's use the Kinder again. Yes. <laughs> we can break that up. And so according to the QT company, it is making changes to encourage open source users to quickly adopt new versions. Um, verbatim what they wrote. A general QT account, it's going to be needed to download the binary packages. So yeah. let's make a point. The source packages will still stay available to everyone. And to that mm. point, the distro packages are based on the open source packages. Mm -hmm. So those are mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> We're not saying everyone don't panic. We're just saying don't panic yet. That that's effectively the official statement from KDE. It's like don't panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold off on that. Yeah. Uh, QT. I did a little research on that. They started the stroll tech. If you remember from billions of years ago, mm -hmm. when I first started um, using Linux, when this rolled around, there was the big fight of, I, you know, I don't use KDE because it's based on QT, which was an open source, and he had GTK, and the GNOME people, I was KDE um, zealot way back in those days. But um, Trolltech uh, started in 95, was acquired by Nokia in 2008, then sold to Digia in 2011, 2012, then demerged and from Digia in 2016. So, it, I can't fault them for trying to turn a profit. You know, they're going to make money. So, mm -hmm. but there are better ways to do it than they, to treat the open source community like, it, yeah. They're going to have to work on yeah. it. They're going to have to get the pricing better because they were talking about like $100,000 if it's a small business. That That's uh. two developers that know anything you're looking at. That's putting you over the $100,000 mark right there per year. And no, as a lot of people have seen, you can't simply fork software at this level of complexity. You don't just walk in and be like, well, it's an entire do? framework. Yeah. It's yeah. not uh -huh. feasible. It's not a widget set anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was interesting. I don't like seeing stuff like that because I've never been involved in a situation like this, but I've been in some stuff that is just going to create unneeded headaches for a lot of projects and it always makes me a little sad because i know people are going to be have, dealing with this instead of working on projects mm -hmm. yeah good times sad. definitely not had by all bit of good news though but yes in Yay. actual actual good news uh yes. thunder chicken <laughs> or thunderbird as you may know it or if you are to take the internet meme database at its word nowadays it's thunderburb uh the the all-loved uh, Linux uh, Mozilla-developed mail client is getting its own subsidiary of Mozilla. They're calling it the MZLA. Uh, the MZLA um, Technologies Corporation will be in charge of Thunderbird. And they say that the amount of um, donations ha has grown. And not only Yay. donations, but also staff and aspirations, like people working there. They've got some goals now, and they actually have a little bit of money to work with, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very glad to hear that uh, Thunder Chicken is growing into <laughs> a um, nice, juicy something that will end up on a pan late. Now I'm hungry. Aww. Why did I do that to myself? I'm glad to see the goodness <laughs> come from it, because for a minute there, especially at the beginning of early last year, I'm like, what's going to happen with this? Because... yeah. yeah. Mozilla's like, not ours. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to touch it. And the Document Foundation went, uh, we don't want to touch it either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, and the people working at the Thunderbird were like, yeah, we're, we're not touching it. So um, that was a joke. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, this, this is such wonderful news because, you know, I was worried about Thunderbird, you know, especially since layoffs M Mozilla recently had, you know, even though, of course, Thunderbird, you know, had had one on its own, but it's still very concerning what's what's going on with uh, Firefox and Thunderbird. So I was so happy to hear this, that they have some funding and go out, everyone, and, and donate to the project. If that, you use it, kick them really a few helps. shekels. That's, um, yeah, you we know, use I, it here at Linux Gamecast. <laughs> I can say from personal experience, going from like a solely one person funded with every bit of spare money I had to having, you know, Crowdfunding is just yep. boom, night and day <laughs> difference in the quality and everything that they can push out. And that's yes. one of the first programs I install because mm -hmm. I manage six email accounts. Yeah. Email doesn't, yeah, yeah webmail, great. that doesn't fly in this particular situation. <laughs> um, Check this out. Terminal-based CPU stress test and monitoring mm -hmm. utility. 
What about HTOP? This is better than HTOP, kind yeah. of, <laughs> a little bit. Um, it does more things, yes. It monitors yes. CPU temps, frequency, power, and utilization with a big, fancy, graphical, blinky, come on, kids, you're going to love this. Hang on, let me get down to this. Oh, get the end curses going. Oh, look yeah. at it. It's <laughs> glorious. It it blinks. It, it looks like the Moonanites got a little <laughs> too much alcohol in them, and they tried to do a show. But... No X is required for this, so you can run this completely headless. And best of all, it has several built-in options for stress testing a CPU. Do a little um, burn-in. I mean, you have a couple of modes just for your standard monitoring. Then they have another package that you can throw in. I, this is probably already in your distribution. Go check that out. Don't it's do a pseudo pip, pip install. Repo, so yeah, you don't. Yeah, if you have the, Python, oh, yeah. just use pip. <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, well, I have an older version of it installed on Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with not pip install this application in particular, it's like, oh, I, I want to install this uh, 267k application. That'll be six gigs of depths. <laughs> pip is I not guess. as bad as NPM, okay? Yes, as. true that. Okay, 4.5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, actually, pip is one of the ones I don't mind at all. And yeah, if you just want to have a look through a bunch of really useful Python applications, fire up pip. And yeah, STUI is... I wish they'd have um, something that could load up RAM. Like, actually hammer on the RAM and see if anything shook loose. Oh, Especially yeah. if you're testing memory timing. I have a uh, dirt bike game nice. that'll do that. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> I don't want it to be, you know, full past, you know, to the point of it's hitting the hard drive now. I just want it something that'll hit, like, all of the sticks to actually test to see if they're working and if something shakes loose. Because That'd be interesting. We, been, we should call yeah. it... Ah, uh, memtest. I think that's a pretty awesome thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you can use memtest, but that one takes a while. <laughs> yes, it I want does. something that's a, a bit time. faster we in do, getting to the heavy stuff. slightly less accurate. <laughs> no, I want something that gets to the heavy stuff faster. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the great features of STUI is that when a certain threshold is exceeded, you can have it run a, sh a shell script for greater monitoring capabilities. And that's mm. really, really, really awesome. Um, and I actually just recently installed a new uh, GUI stress tester called GTK Stress Testing a few days ago, which is very similar, um, but it actually even has some more features than STUI does. But it's very, very similar, right and on. it runs great too. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to murderate a CPU, <laughs> rise and kill, <laughs> except no substitute. <laughs> that was the, um, uh, for the initial like Ryzen 7 1700s that had a bug in them. Have one of those behind me. Still works. It only does that if you force it. You know, if you get like 18 instances of GCC compiling, that'll take it down. What's yeah. up next? Oh, right. The <laughs> fantasy segment of our yes. show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have a Microsoft loves Linux, but we have the. Uh, Free yeah. Software Foundation. You, you, loves you know what? Windows? You say that. You say that. Yeah. You say that. <laughs> there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Such yes. an Adela, despite yes. you having nothing to do with this. <laughs> Totes your fault, man. Um, Microsoft support. This is uh, from the Free Software Foundation. You know, F F S F. It's over. Yes. You know, Windows 7 support. We talked about that a couple of weeks back. Um, but its life doesn't have to end, to which I say, nay, it does. Give me the stakes. <laughs> We're going to hammer this one in. Uh, we yep. call on Microsoft to upcycle it, hippies. Um, instead, upcycle Windows 7. Current signatures uh, probably make more sense if I have scripting enable. Let's take two on that. Uh, 11,270. <laughs> so on January 14th, okay, that we have mm -hmm. some demands to the executives yeah. at Microsoft. <laughs> Allow me. We demand that Windows 7 be released as free software. Its life doesn't have to end. Yes, it does. Give it to the community to study, modify, and share. Okay, I'm kind of behind that. We urge you to respect freedom and privacy of your users, not simply let people take strong arm them into the newest <laughs> yes. Windows version. Hey, man, Microsoft, go to Microsoft, okay? To Microsoft's credit, they're just trying to get people to update <laughs> on something that they can force updates to. Um... Which, you know, when it comes down to overall security and the average Windows user, it's good that somebody does that for them. 
we want more proof that you really respect users. This is not a joke. And user freedom. It's getting kind yeah. of funny, though. And aren't <laughs> using those concepts as marketing when convenient. No, not Microsoft. I no, mean, Microsoft. Uh, why would they? Uh, <laughs> look, yeah. does, does that look like somebody <laughs> that would ever use that? For Mark, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Maybe not, his not precursor, slaves. the Balmer yeah. himself, but uh... they want seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven supporters to sign up for this. We get eleven thousand two hundred and seventy. Can be hundred percent honest with you. Online internet petitions don't do. But hey, man, I like the gesture. And yes. let's be honest, alphabet agencies from around the world would never allow that to happen because your operating system is most certainly <laughs> backdoored. But we both know that. I'm just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this would be wonderful. I mean, Sasha Nutella from Microsoft has said, you know, that he doesn't care about the desktop anymore anyways. So, <laughs> so Desktops just, in the just cloud. release them all open source. Yeah, yeah all he counts yeah. is cloud. Yeah. <laughs> that is where the business is. But yeah, no, yeah. by all means, keep the back doors proprietary. <laughs> keep everything that you reused in Windows 10 yeah. proprietary. Release everything else. Mm -mm. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, just release everything else. Don't, it? Yeah. Don't do it, man. Don't do it, Microsoft. <laughs> keep that shame hidden. <laughs> the hacks upon hacks. <laughs> I mean, at that point, it will be very likely to be nothing because most of it was yeah. reused for Windows 8 and then Windows 10 after that. But something. The, 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 the best something. way to make sure people don't lock in to Windows 7 is not to give them an open source version of it because that's exactly what <laughs> That happened. keeps getting updated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, good point. Good point. Ben. It's like, I will not upgrade with prejudice. I mean, there's somebody out there in Windows XP laughing at all of Windows XP laughing at all of us right now. Mm -hmm. and, mm, that's the thing. Hey, beautiful people. We need to thank all the people that make this show possible. Uh, yeah. You're one of those crazy, crazy folks. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast that lets us do all this five days a week, commercial free. We bring it to you. No tracking, no ads, none of that fun stuff. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get some cool stuff in return. At least I think it's cool. Go check it out for yourself. We got merch. We got PayPal, LibraPay, if you're into that. Magic internet money via Bitcoin. Fair warning, we will spend that. That time we don't hold. <laughs> and uh, wish zones, because yeah. a lot of people over the years have like gave us like the Game Shark to help cheat and um, get stuff earlier than we normally would. And uh, But Jill's got one just for pink equipment. It doesn't yeah. improve anything. It's like, look, <laughs> I got a thing. Oh, so, no, but Your reward is, awesome. is her making that horrifying noise. Yeah. <laughs> so Arthur, yes, gifted me a pink gaming mouse from my Amazon wish list. Thank you so much, Arthur. And now my mouse matches my pink mechanical keyboard that's in front of me that's glowing pink and my pink computer case. So <laughs> pink all the things. I'd show you my keyboard, but I might... Uh, uh, harm the mic in the process. <laughs> I want to thank all the beautiful pretty people on Frank's Fine Up Sandy Cannibal Wall. We got Carl, Mike G, and I. See, I can't pick a right color. We need more, so it goes lower and basil. <laughs> that that wall of shame is if you accidentally mess up and get anything off the studio, wish someone and put me to work. Yeah. But you don't even want to look at that thing right now because <laughs> I had some pricey, pricey nachos. Um, <laughs> it is. We're getting into the hard stuff. Okay, shameless self-promotion is over. Let's get <laughs> into a slice of pie. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. That's oh, like some 3D nice rendered diabetes. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is awesome. This is Terminal Pie. This is inspired by The Matrix and similar to the Reviser version 1 Cyberdeck we talked about a few weeks ago. This is called the arm arm terminal a cyber deck for your desk and this is a really cool project uh jay dosher um who created it loved the look and idea of a floating terminal and says that many of us already have monitors on arms instead of just sitting on the desk so why not an arm mounted cyber deck like the matrix <laughs> and this is a really cool project because it's also 3D printed. 
uh, just like the homebrew revisor we talked about a few weeks ago. And he's he's released the STLA, STLA files. And um, actually, some of the components can be purchased from him, or you can print them out. And he, he goes into a, a thorough list of uh, all the parts needed and how he created it. It's really, really cool. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I'm looking at that, and I'm like re-watching the uh the movie series where they just yank on one of those monitors and bring it to them and then push it away yes. it's like yeah if i did that with one of those arms and we have some of those <laughs> arms at work yes. i mm -hmm. would rip that arm right off the desk <laughs> the amazon basics arm. <laughs> i think anybody of a certain age you know we saw the matrix and we're like oh yep want that at some point in my life and turn into a little goal to have that many as I sit surrounded genuinely by almost that many <laughs> monitors. Um, I even have them on the desk. It, no, just just rock that dual screen lifestyle. You'll be a much happier individual. This, Aww. this maybe for some live monitoring, because I see they have a um, yeah. little it's EQ a... there in the bottom. Like maybe you could play yeah. around with that. Um, and th that's definitely cheaper than some of the kit from Black Magic. So <laughs> yes, just by a bit and by probably a magnitude of a thousand dollars. Cool. Mm -hmm. I love seeing stuff like that. But yeah. if you got something cool, mm -hmm. you want to tell us about it. Uh, you know what? Don't go to Google and search for a mixer that Pedro is currently bidding on eBay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> currently, I'm still the only one bidding on it. So shh. <laughs> Tap that contact button, fam, so we get them digits. What do they say to us, Pedro? Well, you could say basically anything you want uh, if you have a question uh, or some bit of feedback or literally anything that you think is a value add or a value detraction from uh Linux weekly daily wednesdays you can just go to the contact page and uh, fill out the form lwdw is the show you want to send your feedback to Yay. otherwise we will be happy to take your hate mail for that saturday show or ask jordan about relationship advice or there are other things in there we don't Possibly. talk about those things. I don't know, man. <laughs> We're going to have to reboot you after the show. We've almost got yeah. all the bugs worked out of this one. It, it, it gets a little Aww. robotic, but a little bit. Beautiful people. Thank you so much for making this possible. Come check us out tomorrow. We're going to be back to Jordan with some nightmare fuel. I don't know what he's doing Thursday. Probably more Vermintide. Friday night foobar. We're doing the end of the month Yay! Jackbox attack party pack. <laughs> so if you watch this long, there's your special invite. Hit me up in Discord. We uh, usually have about six, to, yeah, yeah, six open <laughs> slots available if you want to put your video face on the internet, or if you just want to hop in audio only, or if you just want to do audience participation. Come check that out. It's going to be at eight thirty Eastern Standard Time. But mm -hmm. let's roll some credits and Aww. see your names in line. Yay. <laughs> that that sounds so dangerous. Thank you, Arthur, and again for my pink mechanical gaming mouse. Well, it's not mechanical, but. <laughs> So, that would be Does my have a ball. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Mechanical gaming mice. Did you hear that, Corsair? Get on it. Oh, oh man, God. the mouse ball is coming back. You know, oh, no. you know that's happening. That's happening, yes. Mouse, what do you mean it's coming back? I have a brand new one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, actually a cupboard in the basement at work that has a box filled with mouse balls. No one knows yes. why it's still there, but it still is. That's just yeah. a case hoarding problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still have lots of mice with mouse balls. All my originals, because those... Yeah. I actually didn't mind the mouse ball. <laughs> 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 yes, you do, Ben. Yes, you do.